Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, most merciful, most compassionate. All praise be to Allah. Peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad and all the Prophets from Adam to him. Peace be upon them all. Let me begin by again an interesting story related by Mevlana Rumi. This is the elephant in the darkness. Some Hindus had brought an elephant in a dark house for exhibition. But no one knew about the elephant and the people of this town never saw such an animal before. But they heard the name of it. So they kept this elephant in a complete utter darkness. People had never seen, as I said, such an animal before. Many people were flocking there, wanted to know how this animal looked like. So since it was in utterly dark, it was impossible for them to see it with the eye. I can only see with the light. So hence everyone was giving his her own feeling and description depending on the specific part they were touching. So one of them, for example, touched with his hand its trunk and he said, oh, this creature must be like a water pipe. Another touched it his ear and it appeared to him like a fan. Another one handled it his leg and said, this creature must be like a pillar. Yet another one laid his hand on its back and he said, truly, this creature, if it's elephant, was like a throne. Likewise, whenever anyone heard, he understood the part that he had touched. Mevlana says here, look, had there been a candle in their hands, they, there shouldn't be any difference. They should be able to see clearly what it was. So all the differences will be no longer there. And he says, the eye of the sense perception is only the palm of the hand. The palm has not power to reach the whole of this animal. And continues, the eye of the sea is one thing and the foam another. Leave the foam and look with the eye of the sea. So day and night the movement of foam flags from the sea. You behold the foam, but not the sea. Marvelous! We are dashing against each other like boats. Our eyes darkened, though we are in the clear water. Mevlana continues, you are foot bound on the earth like grass. You nod your head at a wind without certainty, but you have no foot that you should make a departure or per perchance drag your foot out of this mud. How should you drag your foot away? Your life is from this mud. It is mighty hard for this life of yours to go. When you receive life from God, O dependent one, then you will become independent of the mud and will go. Of course, this has further lines, but I will stop here this uh, uh, quotation and will give you my comments on it. Senses, as we understand from Mevlana's uh, presentation, exposition, senses that we have, we are blessed with our senses. What are our senses? External, internal. So, are not enough to provide accurate, correct information for us. They are important as they make us aware of the things around us, no doubt. Each sense has been created but with a distinct, however, very limited power and can function only in accordance with its limited power and ability. 
So with this example of the elephant in the darkness, Mevlana intends to convey to us, first and foremost, the limitation of human senses. And of course, this uh, how much can we trust our senses, whether they can be a source of knowledge or information has already been discussed in, in the philosophy. And, and so therefore, uh, some of the philosophers choose like experiment and the uh, perception as a source of knowledge. And most of the philosophers, for example, is they find senses misleading and not accurate. So therefore, senses should be strengthened and uh, even some of them said we should put aside all our senses but trust in our reason. In any case, Mevlana doesn't go, of course, into such philosophical uh, disputes or, or discussion. But he just tried to show to us that though these are God-given faculties, however, they have limitations. So if we just rely on our sense or senses, we would have a very limited perception of reality. And we will not be able to get the truth if we are searching for truth. Our knowledge would be in inaccurate, to say the least. Besides, we may even be misled and deceived by our senses. As Mevlana rightfully points out, the sensory power of our senses is like our palm, the inside of the palm. So we need, therefore, to strengthen our perceptive ability by additional powers, such as reason, also God-given uh, faculty, and also prophetic knowledge given also to humanity as a guidance revelation. So let me also give you another important anecdote that we receive from uh, Mevlana's uh, Masnavi. This uh, is an interesting story that uh, uh, it was towards the end of the month of Shaban and the, the last day of Shaban that some Muslims uh, at the time of Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah please with him, in his caliphal period, uh, climbed a hill or a mountain in Medina. And uh, so do, to observe the new moon. So Omar was with them too. And they started looking up the sky to see whether the new moon, the crescent, was born or not, in order to determine the beginning of the month of fasting. And one of these moon observers suddenly exclaimed and turned to Omar, Oh Omar, here is the new moon. I have seen it. He wanted to take a good omen because when you see the moon, and usually people give gift for the first seers of the moon. So hoping that he will get a good omen. And he said, I saw the moon. And uh, thereafter, Omar looked up towards the sky, but did not see the moon in the sky. He told this man who claimed to have seen the new moon, where is this moon? This new moon, I'm afraid, must have risen from your fancy imagination. Otherwise, I am a better seer of the heavens as I have sharper eyes even than yours. So how is it that I don't see the pure crescent and you, you could see? And Omar looked at this person. He said, wet your hand and rub it on your eyebrow. Please, then look up towards the new moon again. When this uh, uh, person uh, wet with his finger his eyebrow and rub it and look at the sky and he did not see the moon. And he said to Omar, Oh, the leader of the faithful, there is no moon, moon anymore there. It has disappeared. And then Omar told him, the leader of the faithful, he told him, the hair of your eyebrow had become like a bow and shot at you an arrow of opinion. That's very important, Mevlana's quotation. As a matter of fact, one hair from your eyebrow was dangling over your eye. That's what Omar was telling. 
It was in the shape of a curve which misled you to such a conclusion. And this is again how your senses mislead you. As Mevlana Rumi articulates here, when one hair became crooked, it waylaid him so that making a false claim, he boasted to have seen the moon. Inasmuch as a crooked hair veils the sky, how will it be then when all your members, meaning senses, are crooked? Straighten your members by the straight. O oh, you who go straight, turn not your head aside from the threshold. Now, let me give my comment, humble comments on this anecdote. Imagine, Mevlana is saying, just a very small hair blocked the vision of this person and led him to make a false claim. How about if all your senses and sense organs were crooked? What would happen? Not only sense perception, but also our preconceived notions may hinder us from seeing the truth. That's what it means. We need to clear all our pre prejudices. Hearsay information, ideologies, when we approach to evaluate a matter or understand a matter uh, correctly, a matter that is in front of us. And Mevlana continues, he says, straighten, straighten your members by the straight. O oh, you, go straight, turn not your head aside from that threshold. Balance makes balance correct. Balance also makes balance defective. Whoever weighs the same as the unrighteous falls into deficiency and his understanding becomes dazed. For this is from Mesnevi, the second volume. The comments, again, I can further suggest here. How do you check if a scale, for example, weighs correctly or not? Only by help of another correct scale you can do that. If your scale is defective, it will weigh incorrectly. So, in addition to our external senses, such as eyesight, hearing, smelling, touching, tactile, or tasting, also internal senses, such as common sense, imaginative faculty, representative faculty, retentive faculty, or like um, cogitative faculty, all are our important perceptive organs and senses. We have been equipped with all these senses from the birth, and each one has a function to execute for our benefit, but they are not the only source of information for us. They are not as strong as we think of. Therefore, Allah Almighty has aided them with more powers, such as reason and revelation. So when we perceive anything from outside or hear something from someone else, we need to check it out before accepting it, it as true. If, if need be, we need to verify all the data we acquire through our senses by virtue of extra means such as reason and revelation. Another important lesson that we can glean from these two anecdotes is that every one of us has a perspective, a way we look at these, th these things. Our perspective change from where we look at it and how we look at the things. So our stance and position plays a crucial role in determining our perspective. When we are assessing an issue or a matter, we should act independently, free ourselves from both external and internal influential factors. Otherwise, we would not be straightforward and even not just in our decisions and judgment. So what are the external influence? You like pressures from our beloved ones, pressures of those who are close, dear and near to us. What are the internal factors? Our predilections, our likes, prejudices, preconceived ideas. So, the really gist of the story, we have to look at things holistically, globally, not partially. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon you all.